Lots of eyes on potential Republican candidates for the White House right now. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker is getting a big share of the attention. He sat down with Chris Wallace to discuss that over the weekend. You have taken some heat recently, I don't have to tell you, for refusing to say whether or not President Obama loves this country and whether or not he's a Christian. And the conventional wisdom is either you're pandering to the Obama haters or you're not ready for prime time. Which is it? The answer is neither. I, I'm not going to take the manufactured media crises and take and follow that path instead of going to the path that I think Americans want, which is leaders who will stand up and tell them where they stand on the issues that matter to them. That talk about how you're going to ensure that that family that's been out of work for the last six months can find a way to be a part of this recovery. To talk about how we're going to take the power out of Washington and put it in the hands of the hardworking taxpayers. Let's talk about it with Alan Combs, host of The Alan Combs Show, which is nationally syndicated by Fox News Radio. Tammy Bruce is also with us, radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor. Scott Walker uh, got a lot of attention uh, after some big speeches he made in Iowa, kind of shot toward the top in many uh, Republican polls. Tammy, is that why, in your view, the media are taking shots at him now? Well, obviously, I mean, the field is very large, and it seems like that pl the only man on the planet is Scott Walker right now. I think that tells you that the media sees him, in fact, uh, as a threat to the status quo. I also think that there's an interesting kind of smugness in their attacks on him, which is really an elite dynamic. He does not, you know, he didn't finish college. And I think whether it's politics or in the media, that there is this uh, refusal to want to accept somebody who maybe doesn't come from their realm. But ultimately, this is good news for Scott Walker because he's learning what to, he's experiencing already what to expect. Uh, he's uh, having great answers for it. Uh, this is not going to end. Already, the New York Times and the Daily Beast have had to retract major stories because of the desperation. So I, I think this is a good training for Walker, and I think he's handling things well. Alan, you probably are about the 180-degree uh, polar opposite of Scott Walker <laughs> politically, but how do you think he's handling all of the attention from the media? Well, first of all, I don't mind that he doesn't have a college education or finish college. That, to me, is irrelevant. Uh, having a graduate degree doesn't make you a genius. But that being said, uh, he hasn't answered questions, even by Byron York, uh, conservative columnist, has said, you know, he may not be ready for prime time. I mean, saying that his biggest foreign policy, significant, the most significant foreign policy development of his lifetime was Ronald Reagan firing Petco uh, air traffic controllers. I mean, I don't get that. Not giving a direct answer whether he thinks the president loves his country. And he's trying to skate on things and rather than give direct answers, including with Chris Wallace yesterday. He doesn't want to give direct answers. He wants to be able to be malleable. And he's not. But what's happening is that he's the non Jeb Bush. He's a non-establishment candidate of the moment. As Frank Brunei wrote in The New York Times, when the media puts its self into a horse race, it often picks a horse that winds up in the glue factory. And I think it's his moment, but I don't think the moment's going to last. Well, what, what about that, uh, you know, does the president love his country brouhaha, Tammy? I mean, uh, that all started when Rudy Giuliani yeah. said that he doesn't believe that, got all kinds of criticism for it in the media and, and elsewhere. Yeah. Now Scott Walker kind of says, well, decide for yourself, and, and now he's getting crucified for that. Well, look, uh, he's refusing to allow the left to direct the narrative. And you know, of course, they want to have that be the question. Nobody in the media really is, at any extent, is speaking about Hillary Clinton's foundation accepting foreign donations while she was Secretary of State. I mean, that is a major story, and yet everybody wants to talk about whether or not Scott Walker believes Obama's a Christian. Clearly, these are red herrings. These are things to also distract people from the serious issues uh, that we face because of the Obama regime and because of Hillary's behavior and her own actions. And this is what they want. They want it to be a distraction. Scott Walker's test. Uh, is to handle this properly. And, and look, these are the early days. I think it's, uh, I, I don't think anybody needs to demand from Scott Walker that they get uh, uh, direct specifics of things. People are still getting to know him. In fact, they're still getting to know Jeb Bush. Uh, and I think, though, the test is how Walker views this push. Uh, and so far, so good, I think. What does it hurt to say he loves his country as Rand Paul did? Rand Paul said, of course Obama loves his country. Of course he's a Christian if he says he's a Christian. And how about the fact I, that Scott Walker, if I could just finish here, that Scott Walker says, 
uh, you know, he compared busting unions to fighting no, ISIS. He didn't. No, he didn't. Uh, when, he See, said, when he says, of course, Alan, I'll be. You know okay, let, please let me finish, no, Stanley. Alan, you please know let me finish. I'm not interrupt you. Please let me finish. False. If Scott Walker can say, uh, you know, yeah, of course, I'll be a tough leader. If I can deal with unions in Wisconsin, I can fight ISIS. That's just patently absurd. No, no but he, he, that's not what the quote was. That's and exactly here, what he said. Here is, here is a message to Alan and all the liberals out there. Not everything <laughs> is about you. He was talking about himself and his leadership qualities, and that's what that quote was about. It wasn't about the left. It wasn't about the unions. It was about himself. So, you know, you've got these kinds of things where it, it, this is, I mean, look at the argument we're having. We're not arguing about the foreign donations to Hillary's uh, uh, foundation. While she held an incredibly important position dealing with foreign countries uh, for this nation. So that's not the conversation. And by the way, I don't care uh, what Scott Walker thinks of Barack Obama. I care what Scott Walker thinks of this uh, country and, and our future and what says, he's going to do about it. It says Alan? a lot about someone's character when they can't answer a direct question. And yes, the Hillary Clinton question is a valid one, no question. But we're now talking about Scott Walker. I have no problem dealing with the Hillary Clinton questions as well. And the, the media should focus what do you on think that. Is more but important, right Alan? now, but r I What's think it's important whether or not a person says, I'm going to be a good leader because I busted unions. And by the way, Reagan busting a union is the biggest foreign policy of issue of my lifetime. That shows how he thinks internationally. I and as Byron York said, he's not he's ready for prime time. Skin. Alan, I love how Scott Walker's getting under your skin and, and, <laughs> it and it's fun to watch. Uh, well, it's not getting under my skin. I think <laughs> that conservatives should be more worried about him than I. He's not going to be my nominee. He's, you're the one who should be worried about him. But Al Alan, you know, on, on the service, just to answer this question, why does it matter? what the governor of Wisconsin thinks about the president's religious faith. It's not specifically what he thinks of the president's religious faith. The issue is a little larger than that. It's how he answers a question. It's the manner in which he responds, not specifically what the issue is in particular, of whether it's faith or loving the country, but the fact that he wouldn't simply that he questions the president's faith or that he questions his love of country, says he's pandering to the far right. That's the issue here. But, uh, you know, why not, why not let voters decide for themselves? Well, I they mean, will, basically ultimately. didn't answer the question. They will look, What's wrong with that? Voters will decide whether or not that kind of response is, shows the kind of character and someone they want to be their nominee. Well, the good news is, is that social media and new media in general is highlighting these problems, the hypocrisy, the smugness, the arrogance of the media, the fact that this is a giant, shiny squirrel. Uh, the new media helped bring down the false <laughs> New York Times and Daily Beast stories. So the world really has changed when it comes to why we discuss these things, how we discuss them and the support we can give people who are being unfairly if attacked. If you think Scott Walker is uh, handling himself in a way that makes him a good potential nominee for the Republican Party, I God sure bless do. you. I sure God do. bless you. We're going we're, we're gonna to leave it there. Good discussion. <laughs> Tammy Bruce, Alan Combs. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. Thank you.